We're here with Lynn Shelton for the playlist on IndieWire. Welcome. Thanks. And congratulations. This is big news this morning. Um, Woohoo! You've yeah. gone Hollywood. I read about it on Hollywood Reporter because I well, like, didn't read my texts or whatever, and I just happened to see the tweet or something, and it was like, oh, somebody's oh, that's film me. sold. <laughs> oh, that's my film. Yeah, it was fantastic. So you're hoping for a summer release? Is that what they mentioned? No, I have no idea. I haven't. They mentioned that they're, that's what they're hoping. I think it hoping. seems appropriate to me as well, so yeah, that okay. sounds great. Cool. Sure, sure. Whatever sure. they want to do. So you were involved all night in the... Bidding war Thank or God, whatever no. was going I've on. I've been to that rodeo, and I don't feel like I need to be a part of that process anymore. Um, I knew that they—that was one of the. I knew there were different conversations happening yeah. with different people, and um, I have to say, I'm, I am really incredibly excited about this particular company buying the film because I feel like they are really exciting. They do a lot of really great work. They've got a great track record with the films they've acquired so far, and I think they're really smart with the way they promote movies and uh -huh. very successful with it. And I, mean, I, I couldn't be happier. Awesome. Yeah. Um, so this is the first time you've directed a film you haven't written. Um, and once you started to get set scripts that weren't your own, it, it seems like it took you a little while to pick one. Oh, um, for sure. Yeah. I mean, to the degree that I thought that I might never end up happening. Uh -huh. I mean, I had been in development on a couple of different things. Um, but this was the one that really, like, just, I was an immediate yes. It just, it spoke to me so, on a, such a gut level, you know. What, what was it about it that... Well, there were a number Struck of things. It was kind of a, a number of different reasons. I mean, um, my very first feature film is called We Go Way Back, and it's about a woman in a 23, she's 23, and she's going through a sort of quarter life crisis, and her actual 13 year old self shows up to help her out uh -huh. in a sort of magic surrealism, you know, realistic twist. And uh, one incarnation of that movie when I was developing it was that it wouldn't be my, her actual 13 year old self but it would be sort of a herself by proxy you know, uh -huh. and she, and she would befriend a, oh. a teenager yeah. and so that was crazy to me it was like oh my god this is the movie I could have made you know back then and I had been looking to go back to that territory not the exact territory but sort of similar territory um, now that I've had a few more films under my belt and sort of know what I'm doing more as a filmmaker um, and so I was kind of ready for that anyway it was crazy so there was that and then there's just the fact that the script itself is just fantastic mm -hmm. I didn't know where it was gonna take me which you, you sort of can often tell by page you know page 10 or right. 20 or 30 where the film's gonna go and this journey always felt unexpected but believable every step of the way you know and I really do take pride in taking a high concept um, like an unlikely relationship you know for instance or some something um, and then figuring out how to make sure that it feels really believable in, in the flesh when it's happening in the, in the film. So anyway, but that was going to be easy because the way the script was written, you know, she really, um, Andrea Siegel is such a talent and she has um, a really strong, strong sense of character, you know, individuality, just there's a uniqueness to her humor and a believability, you know. Um, so even though there's a, a clever sort of acerbic wit in the way people often banter with each other, it never feels unreal. You know, mm -hmm. it always feels like real people. So, yeah, it just really spoke to me mm -hmm. right away on a number of different levels. Did you have a Did you have a similar quarter life crisis that attracts you to this kind of age group, or what? Did you? I've had so many. I yeah, mean, I feel like that idea of um, of that sort of little identity crisis is so human and happens to everybody, no mm -hmm. matter what their gender, certainly, um, and at all different points in life, you know, I think all of us can go along with the current for a while, and at some point or other, we're given an opportunity, you know, whether it's a little, you know, crisis moment, or it's just there's some, some, you know, somebody popping up in their lives, you know, whatever it is, that allows us to take stock of, oh, shit, where am I at in my life, you know, who, who am I and, and where do I want to be in the world and, you know, is the perception of myself lining up with the evidence, you know, that's being presented yeah. to me. That kind of question is my eternal fascination as a filmmaker and as an artist and that's, it's in all of my movies. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's totally universal and I think it can really come at any age, mm -hmm. frankly. Also, you know, how many times have you seen male characters given the opportunity to explore that territory? on film, right. starting from The Graduate, you know, I'm sure even before right, right, that, right, right. Um, it's a great tradition. And women are so rarely given that same opportunity. I mean, it's happened a few times, but my God, the list is this long as opposed to this long. So mm -hmm. I felt like, you know, that was a worthy reason as well. Cool. Um, the movie has a lot of firsts, actually. So 
um, because you were working from a script, you didn't really use, I, I'm assuming you didn't use as much of the improv model as you're kind of known for doing. Yeah, as um, Sam Rockwell says, it's sort of like varnish. You know, the main meal was the script, and then I, I always give my actors freedom. So we're never precious about it, and even though we love the script, we're never super, super precious, and I gave them the um, opportunity to sort of play. Okay. And so you were able to, how did that change the rehearsal period and the way you worked with them? Well, we just didn't have a rehearsal period. Everybody's okay. schedules and, you know, people, Kira just got married. She basically came from her honeymoon to our set, you know. So everybody was, um, was Sam arrived a couple days early but had a spider bite incident that landed him in the hospital. Mm. So he ended up just sort of showing up on set as well. We weren't able to, you know, I at least wanted to have some bonding dinners. The one I was able to get in was Chloe and Kira and I went out mm -hmm. and spent a few hours together and that was great because they really hit it off and they're just so open hearted, you know, so they were able to just it shows it's so normal and great. It yeah. shows. Everyone had such great chemistry, I think. Oh my god. That and it was, was a much wonderful. bigger cast for you too, normally to work sure, with, right? Absolutely. So that was yeah probably tricky figuring all that yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, but luckily each cast member, the entire sporting cast as well as the leads, were, you know, each one was more talented and more sweet natured than the next. I mean, it was just a dreamy situation to go to work every day. Cool. Yeah. Can you talk about your casting process? Was it different than you typically do? or? Well, just in the fact that when you're going to a certain level of actor, if it's an A-list actor, you're not able to have meetings first or audition them or anything or really get to know them before you make the offer. I mean, that's just the way mm -hmm. it is, you know, at a certain budget level and a certain level of actors. So you really, really have to depend on your instincts um, as a director in terms of casting. And luckily, I, I mean, I do feel like if I do have any strong suits, that's probably one of them, yeah. you know, um, is my instinct for casting. And, you know, so for instance, with Kira, I mean, she wouldn't have necessarily been an obvious choice because she's British and especially because she's been doing so many period dramas recently. But I had such a strong vision of her as she was in Bed Not Like Beckham, which was this very, mm -hmm. somebody described her as loose-limbed, and I love that, I think that's beautiful, this very sort of loose-limbed, you know, very natural um, presence on screen in that film, as well as in the Pirates movies, you know, even though those are um, set in a period time, mm -hmm. fantasy period time, it's really a contemporary take on a fantasy, on a, on a period, um, you know, uh, story, and so she is a very modern character in those films, and she's so game, and she's so... She's willing to be comedy. vulnerable, yeah. I yeah. mean, she's just not vain, you know, mm -hmm. which is something I, I really love about actors. So, yeah, no, I, I just had a very strong sense that, that was told that character was completely inside of her, and as long as she can nail the accent, which, you know, most Brits, let's face it, right. are amazing at that, and, right. you know, she was no exception, so. Right. So, with, this is also your first kind of bigger budget movie, Multi -million right? Multi-million dollar. First, Multi -million. I broke the million dollar, you know, by by quite a lot. Yeah, yeah, it was wonderful. So what was, how was that different in terms of the stakeholders you had to kind of deal with? And is it much, di I mean, it's it a much different, different process for you. It was did you like it or did, was it stressful or? You know, it was really more, it worked out really, really well. The financiers, um, you know, the financing producers were definitely wanted to have an opportunity to give their notes and have their say, in the, especially in the post process. But they were incredibly responsive to my opinions. I never felt bullied into making any compromises that, that you know, compromised the integrity, my mm -hmm. integrity or the film's integrity, ever, you know. Um, so they would give me a list of notes and I would go and address every single one of them and the ones that seemed like, oh yeah, no, I see that, they have a point, you know, I totally see that or I'm willing to try it, you know, I would do that. And then other, a few other times I would push back and just say, you know, I feel I strongly disagree and this is why. And as long as they felt heard, you know, and a part of the process, mm -hmm. it was totally fine. So it, it worked out really well. And, and then you had, over that. you had more freedom to, you know, have a bigger budget exactly. too, which is like... Well, that's the thing, you know, that every, right. the, you know, I was able to bring this, um, this production up to Seattle where I've made all my other movies, again, for well under a million dollars, my previous films, with the same pretty much the same base family collaborators mm -hmm. and it was so fun to be able to bring this bigger budget to them same people um, and get to see what they did with a bigger budget you know yeah. and my production designer had a bigger actually had an art department budget you know and <laughs> yeah. didn't have to paint everything himself <laughs> and the uh, um, same with the camera department and lighting you know I got them a real nice lighting package I got a really nice camera for the first time for Ben Kisolke to shoot with and it was it was really really fun um, to get to do that and we and we had, a high, we, we had they were able to hire more people to help them in their departments, you know, have the have the proper amount of crew as well. So we, you know, Ben and I got to go into a helicopter and shoot pretty pictures of our beloved, you know, yeah. Seattle. So it was it was sweet, man. Yeah, definitely worth the worth the uh, the extra energy to 
collaborate with the financers and make them feel heard. In the Q&A the other night, you said that you cast locations as much as you cast characters. Yeah. Can you talk a little about that? I mean, since this is your home territory, your home turf, you knew what you were looking for, but what kind of freedom did that give you? To be yeah, you know, this film, like so many independent films, was shot all on location. There were no stages, you know, nothing worth, nothing on a, on a sound stage, which I love because I feel like it puts people in. I mean, I've worked, the only time I've worked on sound stages is, is on, as a TV director. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't so talk I've about done that. that too. And it's amazing because you have, you know, it's quiet, you're not waiting for airplanes, you know, there's all kinds of wonderful things about it. You have, your your um, lighting abilities are so much more, you know, there's just all kinds of things you can do. But it's an artificial, stagey kind of theatrical environment. And mm -hmm. when you're, I think as an actor, when you're in a home, and this is your character's home, and it's a real home, it really changes things. It can really kind of help ground you in that time and place and person, I think, in a way that, you know, it just, it's just a little bit more effortless than than being, you know, concentrating and trying to push away the catwalks or whatever, you know, mm -hmm. out of your mind's eye. So anyway, I'm, I'm grateful for that. You know, I know Seattle so well, um, but I don't know every region. I have to say, I worked with this amazing location scout and manager, Dave Drummond, who just, I mean, it was incredible. I would tell him exactly what I needed, and he would come up with three or five options that were just dead on, you know, amazing options. I don't know how he does it, but um, yeah, it's, it's, I just find the environment that they're in, you know, it, it's just so important. I mean, every element is important. It's the same with costume design and production design, you know, everything is so vital, every element. And if one thing, if something kind of, there's a there's a gap or, or you know, um, a weakness, it, it shows, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it really is a whole package, all kinds of things that nobody may even realize, you know, all the deliberate decisions that are being made about what's in the frame. Mm -hmm. Were there any um, lightning strikes moments, like for good or bad, that happened that you were like, I can't believe that just happened? Either, you know, either for the best, like the best, you know, you know what I mean. Or the worst. Um, I don't, you know, just little moments of, of inspired. Listen, I think the, all the performances, I have to say, I mean, I'm biased, but I really do think that everybody's performances are pretty inspired in this mm -hmm. movie. Um, but there are, there are just these moments that I just, you know, were just electric on screen, you know? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, moments between Kira and Chloe, moments between Chloe and, um, uh, between Kira and, and Sam, moments between, you know, actually, I mean, everybody, all the supporting roles as well, Ellen Kemper, Mark Weber, Jeff Garland, everybody had a Caitlin real... Caitlin Deaver, she's great. Caitlin Deaver, oh my God. I mean, what she, a year she's having, right? Exactly. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a small, smaller role, but it is a breakout role, I think, and she kills it. I mean, people just love her, and, and she has these, uh, I mean, she gets one of the biggest laps in the whole movie, with one line, you know. So anyway, it's uh, so people are already hashtagging that line on oh. Twitter. It's oh, awesome. okay. Um, so yeah, just those those. I'm such a geek around actors uh, about you know good acting, and mm -hmm. um, that's what I look forward to. You know, I love working with all my collaborators, but really for me, it's all about working with the actors and helping them unlock you know their best performances. And so those are the things I delighted in most of all. I think you know my most. I think my my biggest thunderbolt moment was I was asked on the first. Uh, at the premiere what my favorite scene in the film is and I have so many but I have to say I you know if I had to pick one it would probably be Kira Knightley twirling a, a, a sign a tax advice sign I mean and shooting that was amazing her she had this that one loose wonderful limb. There's security loose limb. guy yeah. who, who couldn't believe what we were planning on doing I just said I want to put her on this corner in suburban Seattle with a little camera crew across the street, you know, across the driveway, and shoot her while cars just go. We didn't shut it, you know, we didn't shut off the street. And I was like, the bigger deal we make, the more of a, of a crowd we'll draw. You know, I, I assure you, it's going to be fine. And what happened was exactly what I thought was going to, which is that not a single car noticed it was her. She's right on the curb, twirling the sign, trying to make a spectacle of herself. Not a single person looks her way. That's and so awesome. she really felt the invisibility of the sign twirler, you know? Oh my God, it was so That's... beautiful. But the way she lost herself, you know, and just unselfconsciously, again, no vanity, mm -hmm. so charming, so funny. I mean, I was beside myself. I couldn't have been happier. Awesome. I was like, I picked the right girl. <laughs> So Sundance has been very good to you. What is oh what God. does this festival mean to you? I mean, in terms of my career, everything. Mm -hmm. Seriously, I had been a part-time teacher who would take the camera, uh, you know, out of the cage and borrow the camera at a bunch of you know former 
students and go make a movie, you know, in the woods. I mean, my, my buddies and I would go off and make movies um, on my on my spring and summer breaks, you know. Um, and I was fine. As long as I got to make movies, I was happy, and I figured that was what I would always do. I would always supplement my artistic, you know, uh, addiction um, with, with making money in other ways. And the good thing about that is I was making small movies that I didn't need to, you know, I had total creative freedom. I could do whatever I wanted. And I didn't have to answer to anybody. Um, but I was, I was, I, I never sought out a Hollywood career. I, it wasn't the kind of, you know, path I was looking for. So when Humpty came to Sundance, all of a sudden opportunities started coming my way without me even looking for them. Mm -hmm. And I was, before I knew it, I had a career as a filmmaker and a TV director and, you know, um, that just, I will be forever grateful to Sundance. So, so really, it means, Sundance means everything to me in terms yeah. of my career. Um, and since I've made that first, that first film that got into Sundance, the, the way that they have um, so generously invited me back again and again has been just, it's just been more and more wonderful. I feel more deeply bonded than ever, you know, than ever before. I just, I feel very nurtured by them, very supported, and um, and I would do anything for them as well. You know, I'm always happy to, to help other up-and-coming filmmakers, mm -hmm. you know, up-and-coming filmmakers, and um, it's a I nice community. It's a beautiful community. Yeah. It really mm -hmm. is. It feels like family. It feels like home. Great. What's the title all about? Um, I mean, I get it, but is is that a term? That, is laggy is a term that people use where you well, just can't get your life in order? I asked Andrea this, and she said, "Well, um, you don't know that term." We I don't know it. Time in high school. No, this is what oh, Andrea oh, said. To oh, me. oh, Andrea, the writer, was like, "I don't know. You, you're like the only person that doesn't know about this this word." And I was like, "Okay, maybe I am." Well, it turns out nobody knows this word except for her and her friends in high school. Where as far did she as we grow up? Find Orange County. Interesting. Yeah, and they would they would use it all the time, like on a daily basis. Oh my God, come on, laggies, where are you? You know, well, let's go. You know, that was a term. And so, we I was worried that people would be annoyed or whatever. You know, they didn't know what it meant. And, but uh, all the other alternatives we came up with were sort of they sounded so generic by mm -hmm. comparison. You know, and I finally realized, well, nobody else is ever going to want to name their movie. You know, laggies. Right. Um, but I like the way it causes you to sort of lean in a little bit. You sort of know what it might mean, but you don't know for sure, but it's okay because you sort of figured out. Anyway, yeah, so I'm very fond of it now. Yeah. I'm all behind it. I like it too. Um, all right, so I'm a huge fan of New Girl. Are you going to be directing more episodes I'm soon? I'm tomorrow to prep, actually. Yes. Okay. So, yes, I get to do another episode. The best. I'm so happy. Um, so what's... Uh, What's, what else is next for you? Do you have an idea I for next time? I actually another TV show for USA called um, Playing House. Is that a pilot? That's a pilot you should No, it's a, no? it'll be episode five, I think, okay. on, a, on a series that's going to launch like in the summer. Okay. So, yeah, it's not on air yet, but it's got Jessica St. Clair at the, at the head of it. Love her. She's so talented. Love her. Yeah, and just a, a really all-star comedy cast. Um, really great. Great, strong cast. So I think it's going to be really fun. Um, and then, yeah, I've got a couple things in development. I'm hoping, you know, I really want to get on set in, in a, on a movie in the in the summer. And uh, will you? Is it something you've written, or is it? Another? No, actually, there's two things. That, well, that's not true. One thing is in uh, from somebody else's script, um, and that's the thing I'm hoping to shoot. But I really, I feel so like it's so tender that I don't want to jinx it by okay. talking about too much. Um, the other thing is something I'm actually going to be pitching to develop. Um, uh, and co-write with a friend, and which will be another new adventure. But it's an adaptation of a real life story, so I, hmm. I, I've never done that before, so hmm. I kind of want the support. But um, yeah, so, uh, and then I have a couple of ideas for improv movies, um, really small improv movies that I'll pull out, you know, if nothing else hits, because I just have to get on set, you know, often, so we'll see. Great, well, lots of challenges ahead. Yeah. Keep moving. Thanks, Kristen. All right, thank you. Yeah.